the only major development here in West Vancouver is in this watershed at Cypress. And these are its headwaters, uh, very unique. The, the creek already suffers from lack of riparian area and, and a lot of intrusions and lack of uh, filtration and, and, and um, retention of water up here to slow things down. So a few more plants to go in here. Because this is where we're coming and going from. We're decommissioning the original U Lake Trail here that now has been segmented by these uh, roads and, and, and earthen bridges across Cypress Creek. So we're putting this trail to bed for people and putting it back into the riparian area. This is the north end of this trail, which is really kind of a shaded area. Um, the trail's built up on rock, a lot of rock fill that you see that we lifted quite a bit of it up. And then landscape cloth and then gravel was pushed down and compressed to level the trail through. So let's just keep walking through on the stepping stones. I've tried to put stepping stones in as many as I could in here everywhere. Um, kind of like hopscotch. <laughs> yeah, lots of great rocks though. And so this is partially for people that do walk in here yeah. So then they uh, don't trample the plants. We're proud of our work, so we want people to see what we've done, and and we want to be able to learn, you know, and come in here next year after the snow leaves and see what we can do. There is a tenant's culvert French drain that runs along this whole right-hand side, except for where this rock outcropping is, and, and it re it, it'll return on the other side. Um, so that's how the area was drained initially and uh, so we've had to adjust and agitate all this to try to maintain as much water here as possible and uh, to hold on to it for our plants here. We have some hydrology issues here we'll have to fix because the runoff off this wall is bad and we tried to divert it away here so we thought we might run into some problems here. We'll fix that up tomorrow. In fact, I think I'll just throw some dirt on it right now. And deal with it tomorrow. We started with a lot of salmonberry here in the beginning. Nothing deters people than salmonberry and well, and Devil's Club. <laughs> but ultimately, we're out here in the open a little more. So we've got salmonberry, elderberry. Uh, we started here just back in at the tree level here. As we start to hit actually natural dirt in here, we really treat it up. Now we round the corner, we hit another area of real pay dirt between this rock outcropping and you can see the yellow cedar and mountain hemlocks here on our left, false azaleas. Here we perforated it all down the gravel, landscape cloth punctured through and started the complex right through here fairly heavily over the next 30 feet. And there's a few more things we do want to put in here, but you can see the bunchberry, the deer fern, yellow cedars, all the trees are here, the Annabalus firs, western hemlocks, uh, because we actually were able to get down through the cloth and hit real, real dirt, and this is where we can really seed it up. Uh, everything from the fireweed, pearly everlasting, the two sedges that are here, or actually there's three sedges here, um, and, and I know that I, I'm gonna bring in the Devil's Club berries too and from over we've got them just down the hill I was gonna go take some seeds from them and I know Catherine wants to bring some goat's beard in oh, yeah. so yeah there's there's a few things coming yet to be layered in the seed world well because we decided not to use the machinery uh, to agitate we felt that all of this growing along the edges was too valuable and not worthy of being dug up because of the bobcats and the small machinery was really kind of wide even and so we did it by hand so that that actually added a full month of weekends and five weeks of kind of agitation and getting the trail prepared with soils mixing it all in and, and then adding bringing the rocks up from underneath in the gravel uh, on top of the landscape cloth and then bringing in woody debris and doing the planting so yeah, I know it took a lot longer than I had expected. Uh, I did, we were just trying to do the, the best job possible, so yeah, time was, yeah, time was spent. <laughs> we do have pink salmon, we had a Chinook salmon in here recently, so 
it is a salmon bearing stream and that's what we feel is so important to try to protect and enhance our headwaters and our wetlands. These wetlands are critical as far as water quality improvement downstream, um, providing um, nutrients for the fish that live here. Um, yeah, and everything else along the way. There's tailed frog. Uh, in fact, I've seen, since I've been on the trail here, I'm certain I saw a red-legged frog because it was so big. But um, yeah, there's a lot of life up in here. Uh, uh, it's basically slowing down our water, but ultimately purifying and cleaning our water. And we're very happy to be able to do some enhancement, uh, finally. And uh, we certainly hope to continue to do it. And because we feel so impressed with these wetlands up here, it's so beautiful and so close for all of us that you know, it's really good to see these, and all you do is drive up, it's not even a strenuous walk. This is a beautiful headwaters. Oh, ducky! Oh, babies! What are they? What kind of duck was that?